Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ once again. The Lord has enabled us to enter into this holy place and give all glory to Him through our singing, through our prayers in this first Sunday of this new year. Forgetfulness is a human weakness. At the same time, it's a blessing. Especially, you are able to forget the past failures, hurtful events, pain of losing our loved ones, so many other things. But the Lord always wants us to remember His promises. Once they had a very forgetful bishop. <clears throat> Once Bishop Amma asked him to buy certain things. So he took the car and went to the shop. And after purchasing, he came out. He forgot that he came in the car. He saw a bicycle and he thought he came in the bicycle. And he climbed on the bicycle and came home. Fortunately or unfortunately, the bike was not locked. When he came home, Bishop Amma asked him, where is the car? And then only he realized that he went in a car and came in a bicycle. <clears throat> and he said, oh, I, by mistake I took the bicycle of someone, let me go and return it immediately. So he came to the shop back. <clears throat> and told the manager of the shop what happened and the manager knew him so he said bishop don't worry the boy who lost the cycle came with his mother and gave their address don't worry you take the car and go i will return this bicycle to the little boy but the bishop said no 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 that's not fair I myself will go and give the bicycle and apologize to them. <clears throat> so the manager gave the address, the bishop took the bicycle and went to the house and the boy's mother, the parents were so happy to see the bishop in their house. So they invited him into the house and gave him coffee and they were chatting for some time. And Bishop apologized for taking the son's bike and he came to return it. <clears throat> and finally, the Bishop said, okay, let me have a word of prayer. So he offered a prayer and the family was so happy. They forgot about Bishop taking the bicycle for some time. But because that made the Bishop to come to their house. And after the prayer, the Bishop came out and went straight to the bicycle, started climbing on it. <laughs> the family didn't know what to do. Finally, the mother said, Bishop, <laughs> pointed to the bicycle. Then he remembered that he came to give the bicycle. We are forgetful, that's true. But only when you hold on to the promises, you will see the fulfillment of the promises in your life. Anyway, you all received the promise cards. How many of you remember the words that you have received? <laughs> I know some of you got very good Bible verses. Some people were a little doubt <clears throat> because one person got a promise that you will increase on your left and right. It was already fat. So he was a little upset about the promise card. <laughs> Anyway, it doesn't matter. He, he was, that verse is talking about your territory or boundary or your blessing. <clears throat> now, today, we have given the topic of manifestation of Christ based on the Epiphany Day that we celebrated yesterday. <clears throat> now, to say a few words about Epiphany, <clears throat> in early days, many people had their own Christmas days. Some people celebrated on December 25th and Eastern Orthodox. The churches in Persia and Iran and Iraq, they celebrated Christmas on January 6th. And then the churches wanted to come together and they said, 
see it's not fair that we celebrate two birthdays of Jesus Christ okay let's have one <clears throat> let's celebrate Jesus's birth on December 25th because many churches celebrate on December 25th of course we will have January 6th as an epiphany day when the wise men came and visited Jesus Christ because till then he revealed his coming only to the israelites when wise men came he revealed his coming to the whole world of course the star was there when jesus was born but at the same time it was the wise men the gentiles non jewish people particularly based on many verses they have come up with the idea which i talked to you on the christmas day that one person has come from europe africa and asia telling the whole world that jesus is the savior for the whole world now as a church that has been existing for 120 years you would have heard many sermons on the wise men so i'm not going to touch upon it so i'm going to shift it a little bit <clears throat> taking the topic manifestation of christ in the old testament suppose i ask this question did jesus christ exist in, during the old testament times how many of you would say yes of course if you have attended bible study fellowship bsf you will say yes because you already taught that jesus christ was there in the old testament times god was father son and holy spirit always from the beginning so definitely jesus would have been there in the old testament times then the question comes what was he doing simply sitting at the right hand of the father no in the old testament the bible scholars say that jesus visited people in the old testament times also now where do you find these passages how do we know they say there are many references about angels when wherever we find the word angel we think that it is the angels angel of the lord but in certain places we have the phrase the angel of the lord now these whenever we see this angel of the lord appearing to people slowly we see the angel of the lord claiming the position of god it's really amazing he will appear as the angel of the lord slowly he will talk as if he is god himself it's really amazing then we have come up with one beautiful bible verse in isaiah chapter 63 verse 7 to 9 7 to 10 where we have a beautiful passage that talks about father son and holy spirit where do we see jesus christ in this look at verse 9 if you have the bible you can take it i know our pew bibles are little heavy but at the same time if you are interested you can take the passage isaiah chapter 63 verse 9 look at the verse in all the affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them it not only stops there it continues saved them in his love and in his pity he redeemed them now look at the line just above verse 9 and he became their savior now if you look at these words that are close to the angel of the presence we come to know that clearly refers to jesus christ he is our redeemer he is our savior he was the one who is who was afflicted so we know jesus was there during the old testament times now i am going to place before you three events first found in genesis chapter 16 genesis chapter 16 <clears throat> there we see the angel of the lord 
appeared before Hagar. Hagar. Now I compare this Hagar with Jesus visiting Samaritan woman. I see many similarities. See, this is not anywhere in the, any other books. This is what I have come up with. Hagar and Samaritan woman. We have many similarities. In both the cases, Jesus met them near wells. Hagar, even though she didn't know initially, then Jesus showed the well and said, and she gave the name. This is Lakai Roi. Beer, beer means well. Beer Lakai Roi. And in John chapter 4, we again see Jesus meeting Samaritan woman. And both, both their lives were not very perfect. Both were undergoing some sort of struggle in their life. When Hagar were running away from Sarah, she was pregnant. And Sarah chased her, ill-treated her, went to the extent of giving all sorts of heavy work. Even though she was pregnant, she had to do a lot of work. And it was not her own will, by her own will, she became pregnant. It was Sarah who asked her to get pregnant. And she gave a body to a person, Abraham. Now she is pregnant. More like a surrogate mother. Now she was persecuted, ill-treated, mistreated. So she ran away. She didn't know where to go. Probably she was crying. At the time, the angel of the Lord met her and said, Don't worry, I will bless the child. Go back and stay now. Now that was not the end. Again in chapter 21, she runs away. There is, I'm sorry, she didn't run away at that time. It was Abraham who sent her away with Isaac. Now I, uh, Ishmael, Ishmael is a little grown up person. But Sarah said, no, I have Isaac now. Ishmael should not be in our house. Then Sarah and Abraham made her to leave the place. Now Hagar, holding this little boy, wanders in the wilderness. At some point, they ran out of the food and water, and she didn't want to see the child die. She leaves the boy somewhere and goes out a little further and starts crying. Again, we see the angel of the Lord met Hagar. Look at the pathetic condition that she was in. In the same way, look at Samaritan woman. When Jesus met her, he told her, See, you have five husbands. Now you are living with a man who is not your husband. That clearly tells the pathetic condition of Samaritan woman. In a Jewish community, you can remarry if your husband dies. Okay? When Jesus said you had five husbands, that meant either she lost her husband or she got divorced. Five times. Five times. Now, nobody wants to marry her. Not even as a second or third or fourth wife. Now, in order to have a security in the society, now she was associating herself with a person who has his own family, who was not willing to marry her. Both of them were in a pathetic, pathetic condition. And Jesus, out of compassion, met both of them turned the life, changed the life, transformed the life and made one person, you will be a mother of great nation. Ishmael, 
will have his own descendants he will be a great nation then samaritan woman jesus made her a missionary she went into the village and asked the people to come and see jesus christ she was the first missionary so dear brothers and sisters in christ the first meeting of jesus christ with the persons who had difficult times shares with us the message that jesus our jesus is a compassionate jesus so that's why i gave the topic compassion of jesus christ dear brothers and sisters in christ many a time we also experience pathetic conditions in this world whenever you experience that whenever you undergo some situations then you remember always that jesus christ has compassion upon you a god or jesus has compassion when a widow were crying because she lost the only support young son the scripture says jesus moved with compassion when a leper came and knelt before him lord if you decide if you will you can heal me so far nobody has healed leprosy patients but he was bold enough to come and kneel before him at a distance at a distance and said lord if you want to you can do it and there again we see the scripture saying jesus moved with compassion moved with compassion he went towards him and touched him i said i will you heal dear brothers and sisters in christ the first even that we see in the old testament jesus meeting hagar telling us our jesus is a compassionate jesus even in our pathetic situation god can transform us uses mightily the second even that i would like to share with you is found in exodus chapter 3 this is a well known passage angel of the lord meeting moses now i would say it's jesus even though it begins with this phrase look at verse 2 the angel of the lord appeared to him in the flame of fire now as you move on the angel of the lord speaks to him continuously suddenly you will see in verse 6 the same angel of the lord it says i am the god of your father the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob how can an angel angel of the lord say that i am god when he asked moses asked what's your name the same angel of the lord says i am yahweh i am that i am i am sending you dear brothers and sisters in christ even though initially moses recognized the person as the angel of the lord it was not just an angel it was jesus who appeared to moses and asked him to go and here i would like to compare moses with uh, peter simon peter i see many similarities i was really amazed really thrilled to see the similarities between moses and peter both were doing the job moses was keeping his flock peter fishing and both of them were called after god performing a, performing a miracle when moses was called he saw the miracle of burning bush there was fire but the plant was not consumed and here again peter when jesus called them jesus performed the miracle all through the night they didn't catch any fish but when they obeyed jesus they caught two boats full of fish both of them were encountered by god who showed them a miracle 
and amazed them and then God called them. Now we see <clears throat> the second similarity is that both of them experience their inadequacies. When Moses heard the voice, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, when it said, remove your sandals, sandals, he, Moses simply looked at the ground. He couldn't even dare to look at the person who was speaking to him. He fell down, removed his chapel and fell down. And again, when Jesus performed the miracle, what do we see in Luke chapter 5? Peter saying, Lord, I am a sinful man, depart from me. In both the cases, Moses and Peter experienced the inadequacies, realized it and humbled themselves before Jesus. But at the same time, we see Jesus Christ calling them, entrusting them with great ministries. To Moses, he said, go, I am going to use you. I am going to use you to redeem my people. And here, I am going to make you fisher of men. You are going to catch men. And both of them became great leaders. Moses to the old Israel. Peter, head of the church, the new Israel. And bear in mind, both of them were weak. Both of them had their own weaknesses, made mistakes. Moses, you all know, when God said, you go and speak to the rock, he went and hit the rock. And how about Peter? He denied Jesus Christ for three times. Yet we know it was Jesus who called both of them and used them in a wonderful way. This talks about call of Jesus, giving us the message, in spite of all our weaknesses, God can do great things in our lives. God can use us. Now let me move on to the last one. <clears throat> Gideon. You can turn along with me to Joshua, sorry, Judges chapter 6. There again we see the angel of the Lord appeared before Gideon and said, Go in this might of yours, do not I send you? In other words, Gideon, <clears throat> and I compare him with uh, St. Paul. Here we see in this beautiful passage in Judges chapter 6, the angel of the Lord encountering him. Even though he initially thought it was just the angel. Just an angel. Now what do we see? Look at uh, verse 15 and 16. When Gideon found it was God encountering him, he said, I want to give you some offering, stay here. So the angel of the Lord stayed, that is Jesus. He went and brought some offering and the angel of the Lord said in verse 20, take the meat and the unleavened cake and put them on the rock and pour the broth on it. That is, he was offering things to God Gideon was offering things to God. Now what happened? The angel of the Lord touches the offering, offering that was given to God alone. The angel of the Lord touches it and the whole thing got burnt. That means the angel of the Lord accepted the offering. How can an ordinary angel can accept the offering given to God? Because in the book of Revelation, we see time and again the angel asking John not to fall before him. No, 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 you have to fall before God. I'm just an angel. I'm just a minister like you. Don't fall at my feet. But here we see the angel of the Lord accepting the offering offered by Gideon. That means it was not simply an angel. It was Jesus. Now I compare Gideon with St. Paul and close our meditation. First of all, I see 
the people of god were under fear when god called gideon and sent paul now in the old testament during the time of gideon the people were afraid of the midianites enemies but here the people of god the church the christians were really scared with the leaders of the israel pharisees the high priest and paul being a pharisee he wanted to join with the leaders he started persecuting the christians now the second comparison that i see is that <clears throat> both of them have received signs and visions gideon also received signs and he also received visions saint paul also had visions and he also received many signs dreams god leading him in his ministry the third similarity that i see i was really amazed to see this god made gideon as a weak person even though he was very courageous god said gather some people in fact gideon was able to gr- gather many number of people as soldiers but god said no i don't want so many people i just want 300 people 300 people and why if you look at chapter 7 there we have a beautiful verse verse 2 the lord said to gideon the people with you are too many for me to give the midianites into their hands lest look at the important phrase lest israel boast over me saying my own hand has saved me what does that mean god made gideon to choose only 300 person 300 soldiers what was the weapons all that they had jars a torch and a trumpet what sort of weapons are these to fight in a war fight against an enemies but still god asked them just to take the jars earthen jars earthen jars and a torch and a trumpet but god gave them victory that is i want you to be weak i know you are weak i am keeping you as a weak person because i can do wonderful things in your life so that you may say it was by god's grace it was through god's power it's through god's leading i was able to do great things in this world whether it's in your workplace or in a church or any other place wherever god has placed you god can do wonderful things but at the same time you will realize that you are weak you know your bodily weaknesses mental weaknesses but god can use you in a wonderful way and the same way look at the saint paul i was able to compare gideon and saint paul in a wonderful way we come up with many similarities saint paul was made blind when jesus called him you all know that and till the end he had some sickness and he wanted god to heal him god said no i am not going to heal you you are going to be a weak person but in your weaknesses my strength will abound dear brothers and sisters in christ here we see jesus is commissioning jesus commissioned gideon to win the war jesus commissioned saint paul to build churches in many places both of them were victorious leaders god can use you in a similar way so i simply shared with you three appearances of jesus in the old testament time how god dealt with these people compassion of jesus call of jesus commission of jesus now i am not going to end this sharing with this alone let me share with you something <clears throat> when william carey was sitting at a table for a dinner invited by lord hastings 
one of the generals made a comment about William Carey and said isn't he a son of a shoemaker William Carey was a missionary he translated the bible into 40 different languages and dialects when he was honored the general made a comment isn't he a son of a shoemaker when william carey heard this overheard this he rose up and said sir i am not a son of a shoemaker i am a son of a shoe mender even i was a cobbler not shoemaker factory owner making shoes no i was mending shoes repairing shoes cobbler you know william carey he was the key person behind the abolishing of the law against sati but god used him in a wonderful way just a shoe mender a cobbler how much more god can use you and me and final note is that sadhu sundar singh met a person in himalaya he calls him kailasha maharishi kailash is a uh, himalaya maharishi okay is saying sadhu sundar singh says i met the saint he was a muslim convert and he was full of hair and he said jesus visits even today and he also said i got converted all my families have died i came to himalaya and staying here in the cave worshiping god father son and holy spirit and god has revealed me that he appears to people even now that is in this modern age as he appeared in the old testament times jesus appears to some people and helps them dear brothers and sisters in christ manifestation of jesus christ doesn't confine to the three wise men we just think that is a three because there were three gifts that's all jesus appeared in the old testament transformed like people's life he was on earth transforming people's life even now he continues his transforming ministry in your life and in my life let's pray loving god we thank you for this blessed morning thank you for enabling us to meditate upon your living word Lord thank you for giving us your beautiful wonderful messages through the appearances through your appearances to the people in the old testament times Lord you did the same when you were on earth and even after raising again Lord we know you have compassion upon each and every one of us you call us to to do your work lord you are also commissioning us to go out into this world and do your work as lord as hega and samaritan woman was in a pathetic condition sometimes we also experience similar situations oh lord at the time help us to remember that you always have compassion upon us and intervene in our lives change our lives and lift us high and we thank you for that oh lord as you called moses as you called saint peter even though we are weak you can do wonderful things in our lives lord as you did in the life of Gideon and St Paul many a time you keep us in our own weaknesses so that i may we may not boast that it is our own might that we are able to do great things it is through your power through your grace that we are able to do 
many things for your glory o lord lord we thank you for these beautiful messages help help us to hold on to these and receive many things in this new year and do great things for your glory in this new year too in jesus name we pray amen